Hi, I'm Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, and if you're looking for real news, make sure you check out Florida's Voice. Hi, this is Governor Ron DeSantis. When you see that the mainstream media is not giving you the facts, just turn to Florida's Voice. Good evening, South Street Grill. Are you guys out there? Can I hear you? Yeah. This hit the Joe Biden rally. If you love freedom and you love being here tonight, celebrating that freedom, make some noise. All right. I got to give a shout out to what might be the best looking black man in Florida, Larry Love, Larry Love, Byron Donald's on his staff. Larry Love, we love you. Do us a favor, tell Byron Donald's we love him, we appreciate him fighting, and he looks damn good on TV, man. Tell him keep fighting that fight. All right, guys, what we do. Listen, welcome to Freedom Town USA. I'm Patrick Dearborn. And by the way, my brother, Tim Durrett. Tim, where are you at? Tim, 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 where are you? Right here in the front. Make sure you vote for Tim Durrett. Collier County Supervisor's Elections. That's a paid endorsement from Patrick Dearborn. I'm all in with Tim Jurette for Collier County Supervisor of Elections. Okay. Tim Jurette is a former Collier County Sheriff. I love all of our first responders. On behalf of Brendan Leslie, myself, and Florida's Voice, we love all of our first responders and all of our veterans. And in honor of my favorite veteran, POW, survivor, and American hero, Wayne Smith, I'm gonna call up Miss Sarah Toder as we rise for the national anthem. A round of applause for Miss Sarah Toder. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the If you don't know that name, Sarah Toder, remember that name. Sarah, thank you. God bless you and your dad. And before I forget, Diana and everybody here at South Street, we want to give them a big round of applause. Great staff. Take care of your servers. Take care of your bartenders. It's awesome. We've had Governor Ron DeSantis up here at this place. 
I'm sure Donald Trump will be here one day. It's great to have locally owned businesses that support our right to assemble, our right to salute the flag, and our right to kneel at church. So thank you, Diana. Thank you, South Street. Give them a big round of applause. And try the quesadillas, because they are delicious. OK, moving on. We're going to have a quick word from our sponsors. But before we do that, Michael Longo, the sexiest bald-headed man in the room right now, Naples Floral Design. Thank you for being a big sponsor of our show and being a patriot. Make sure you all support Naples Floral Design and Michael Longo. Good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Longo. I'm the owner at Naples Floral Design here in the Bed Bath & Beyond Shopping Plaza on the corner of Airport Road and Pine Ridge in the heart of Naples. We're here to serve all of our community's needs. We have a full line of tropical flowers, fresh flowers that arrive daily from all over the country. We are proud Americans, and we are very proud to sponsor the Patriot Talk Show. So if you're in my area, please stop on by and see us, or give us a call, 239-514-1414, or just go online to naplesfloral.com. Thank you so much for your patronage. Mike, I gotta be honest, so I love the beard. The beard plays, man. Keep the beard going. The beard plays. And <laughs> let's do it. And we'll do some Photoshop too. We'll do some Photoshop. Speaking of great patriotic businesses, I'm gonna get a quick shout out to the guy back there at the bar, Kerry Scott. If you shot guns before at the Alamo, make some noise. The best gun range in Freedom Town, USA. Stop over there and see that guy. I got a feeling he might have some free promos, maybe a couple little free memberships, some stuff. So stop by and see Kerry Scott at the Alamo Gun Range. Okay. It's time to get the show started. The reason why we're here, and you heard us give a shout out to him earlier, Brendan Leslie left the mainstream media news because he got tired of the lies, and he went and started Florida's Voice. And him and his team, you got Eric, you got Leah, you got Zach, they have an amazing team. So I'm gonna call the stage right now, my Patriot Warrior brother, and the guy that keeps us informed with the real news here in the entire state of Florida, Trump loves them, DeSantis loves them, and I know Byron Donalds loves them, and we love them too. Put your hands together for the one, the only, Brendan Leslie! How are we doing, Naples? It's good to be back. We were just here like three weeks ago. South Street, love you. Love coming here. It's one of the best venues we ever had to show. I have two free hats I'm going to toss. I, I know I was looking for you. You get one. You get the free hat. And we got, I need a vet, I need a vet. Raise your hand if you're a vet. You get the free hat, here we go. All right, so exciting, some housekeeping to take care of before we get to the show. I got three free three month memberships to the Alamo, we are giving it away. If you wanna join into that raffle, we're gonna do it at the end of the show. Go to the front table, enter your name. Three free month uh, shooting memberships at the Alamo. Uh, they are getting a renovation done. Also, it's the best place in Southwest Florida to shoot your guns. So some point before the end of the show, enter your name at the table at front. Last piece of housekeeping, we're having a blowout sale of the merch, $5 off everything. T-shirts, $20, hats, $25. I want to get rid of all of it. So Slasher prices. Buy the shirts. I'm trying to get rid of all that merch. I'm done with it. Thanks, right. jo thanks Joe Biden. We're slashing everything. Holy cow. All right, all right, all right. This is an exciting day because I love Naples, I love the guests that we have coming on. It's gonna be a really substance-filled show. You guys are gonna probably walk away learning something that you didn't learn before. And that's the whole point of Florida's Voice, bringing, becoming the mainstream media. And I love how we have all sorts of different clubs here, groups of friends here, because this is really where we're gonna make the magic happen. And we got an important election coming up. We have a lot of local races we're gonna keep an eye on here in Collier County, and a lot of those people will be on this show in the future. So keep telling your friends, keep coming back. I appreciate everyone. And without further ado, Pat, I don't like this seat. That's not, I, this is my seat. I let Pat on the stage one time, and he takes my seat. All right, let's call up our guest of the night. First of all, she is known as, she's actually the queen of Naples. Wow. But she's also become known as the queen of Tallahassee, and that is Florida's very own Senate president, Kathleen Pasadomo.
Hello, Madam Queen. <laughs> hello. Every time I call her, I'm like, hello, Madam Queen President. He does. <laughs> And I call her a lot because I need to know everything that's going on in Tallahassee. I, I want to say one thing. Um, I've gotten to know Brendan over the last couple of years. He is the biggest asset that this community has for getting real news to us in Tallahassee. I'm just so proud to work with him. He's an amazing young man. Amen, amen. I swear I'm not paying anyone to say this. It's just right. Ah, uh, nothing about me. Let's bring up the man in the hour, the myth, the land, the legend, the six foot seven giant with the best hair in the town, Scott Pressler, everyone. <laughs> Scott, how are we doing, buddy? I'm just glad I didn't do my hair. Every time I turn around, it's raining here in Florida. You have joined us in the Florida in the, in the, in the rainy season. Welcome, we, we're so used to it. I drove through a hurricane to get here, actually and I'm still alive. All right, Scott, what are you up to these days? Well, you know, I'm glad that people are excited about DeSantis and Trump and the presidency in 2024, but I really want people to center on what's happening now this year in 2023. You know, we got Kentucky, we got Louisiana, Virginia, Mississippi, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. I want people to understand if you want your man or woman to be successfully elected next year, then let's focus on what happens now, this year, that's going to give us momentum and propel us to victory. Madam Queen President Kathleen Pasadomo, <laughs> you, this is a story that doesn't get told enough. Uh, we, told, we talked with Wilton Simpson at our last show in Tampa uh, last week with Scott, and we were talking about all the things that the Senate the Senate campaigns that you're ahead of does to make sure that good conservative warriors win elections throughout the state of Florida. How are you feeling going into this cycle? I'm really excited. We have the most significant, fantastic, conservative Republicans running in pretty much every district. What we did in the last election cycle, we were able to pull out a super majority in the Florida Senate, which is an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Woo! What that does with a supermajority, our entire agenda was completed. The, the governor's entire agenda was completed, and the speaker's entire agenda was completed. So our goal is to keep that supermajority and maybe add one or two. We have, we have 40 senators, 28 Republicans. It's unbelievable. Is, don't you just love coming to a red state of Florida, Scott, Pat? Two words for you. Three words. <laughs> Freedom Town USA. Scott, uh, I want to tell you about Madam Queen President Kathleen Pasadomo. We had her on this show when it was at Seed to Table about 10 months ago. And we're going to play a clip of something she said that she was going to do when she went up to Tallahassee. Eric, can we play that clip? Oh, I don't want to look. It's really important that parents of any school-aged child has the right to make decisions for those kids. We ended up with K through 3 because we wanted the bill to pass. And that's oftentimes a part of the process, you have to compromise. I think if we have the supermajority we're looking for in the House and the Senate, we may be able to expand that bill. We're also going to look at more school choice uh, provisions and support our, our really good charter schools. So 10 months ago, Kathleen Pasadomo was on the stage at Seat to Table next to me and Alfie Oaks and said, if we have the supermajority in the Senate, we are going to expand parental rights in Florida and make and pass universal school choice in Florida. Is, did those promises get upheld? They certainly did. They certainly did under the leadership of Kathleen, Madam President Queen, Pasadomo. Scott, Republican wins are possible. Florida was a purple state like what, four years ago, not even? Yeah, I mean, this is the quintessential battleground. Voted for President Obama twice. 
In 2012, Democrats had an advantage of 500,000 more Ds than ours. And today, for the first time in history, there are more than 550,000 more Republicans than Democrats in the state of Florida. So it shows you what can be accomplished by focusing on voter registration. It shows you what can be accomplished by having conservatives legislate and now the entire country wants to be like Florida. Scott, how many of those 550,000 voters did you register in Florida? <laughs> a couple. <laughs> Just a couple. Raise your hand if you are not registered to vote in the state of Florida or you're registered as an independent. Anyone in this room? I will find you. We got one, Scott, we're gonna get her. You know I am tracking do? you down. He's gonna register. That's fine. We need a re Hey, breaking news, Florida's voice. Now it's 550,000 and one more Republicans in the state of Florida over Democrats. Well, but it's an important reason why people need to understand. You guys are a closed primary state. And I know that you may be happy with the Senate and the House and your governor, but you may not be happy with Chairwoman McDaniel and the apparatus of the National Party. But remember, if you change to an independent, if you don't register as a Republican, you can't support Donald Trump in the presidential primary. You can't support Governor DeSantis. So let everybody know, if they wanna have that voice in the presidential primary, they must be registered as a Republican in Florida. Watch this, watch this. Watch what he just spits out of his head right now. Name all the states that are closed primary states in, in America. Arizona, California, Florida, Pennsylvania, Oregon, New Jersey, New Mexico. Those are some. Kansas. <laughs> so the more Nevada. you Nevada. Know, so ask seriously, when you, when you guys are talking to your friends, ask them, are you registered as a Republican? Listen, I hear all the time, Rhino this, Rhino that. Well, you can't strengthen the Republican Party unless you can register to vote in the primary here in the state of Florida. Kathleen, when you hear about the 550,000, you guys, the Senate campaigns has invested some serious money into the initiative with the Republican Party of Florida to register voters. Just what are your thoughts about that? How did we get there? Well, it was, first of all, we had a great ground game. We were in every shopping center. We were at every, in fact, if there were 10 people together anywhere, there was somebody on our team registering people to vote. And the other, th the other thing, too, is, you, you know, when you think about all the people that were moving to Florida, about five years ago, I started getting worried about all these people moving to Florida, thinking, oh, my God, we're going to have a lot of people from uh, states with high taxes, et cetera, moving to Florida uh, with their, you know, a lot of Democrats who were leaving the high-tax states and coming to Florida trying to bring their policies here. But what was happening, were, they were registering as Republicans. We got more and more people coming to Florida registering as Republicans. So we just kept people at the, ca at the state line, and as they were coming in, we were handing them cards. And it, w it was amazing. Uh, every week, we had an update, and it was 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 people registered um, as Republicans. And I, I got to give Governor DeSantis uh, credit for putting together a huge team that all they did was register Republicans. Scott, I want you to talk about, and Pat, I want you to listen real close because I want you to learn something today. I, I want you to tell us what, there's how many, we got, we got the Collier REC here, the GOP, and we got just about every Collier Republican club in, in attendance, representation from CCRC. all of them. So we have just about every club in here. I want you to kind of give them the blanket lesson of what they should be focused on if we want to keep Florida red moving into the 2024 election. Well, I have good news and bad news. We'll start with the bad news. When I told people I was coming to Florida, they said, Scott, why are you wasting your time here? Florida's good. And I love that they're confident about your state and that the direction you guys are moving in, but I was actually born in Jacksonville, Florida. And I have to tell you, we recently lost a mayoral election. We lost the mayorship in Jacksonville. And you know what's even worse? 
We lost it even though more registered Republicans by 7,000 more turned out than registered Democrats. You know who we lost? We lost independent voters. And so it tells me that while we're focusing on the base and things like stopping the sexualization of children, we have to also realize that the independent voter maybe cares about things like abolishing property taxes or maybe wants the uh, relief for their families or more affordable housing. We need to continue to come up with a message that is going to appeal to the independent voter if we're going to be victorious in 2024. It's fun, whoa, that's a lot stronger of a mic. It's funny that you say we need to appeal to the independent voter and we should work on things like affordable housing. Kathleen, what are you working on or what did you pass this legislative session? Yeah, we passed the most robust uh, workforce housing bill in the country. And, you know, what I wanted to say, and I think it's really important, the number one priority of the Florida Senate is to pass meaningful legislation that's important to you all. And it's not just hot button issues. We got done the agenda, the important agenda. We got done the school choice bill. We got done the parental rights bill. But that's not all we did. And the press has always given us a hard time about some of the controversial bills. But we passed an affordable housing bill. I'm getting calls from all over the country uh, from developers who want to come to Florida to build workforce housing. We did a lot of really important things. We passed tort reform. In Florida, we have been talking about the hellacious tort uh, climate where Florida was the last state in the country for litigation problems. We passed a bill that will m make a huge difference in the cost of living in Florida because of the, the lawsuits. We passed an insurance reform bill. Be because of what happened with Hurricane Ian and some of the bad actors, both the trial lawyers and the insurance companies that were not paying claims. We passed two enormous bills. So my message to everybody is why it, uh, is the Republicans in Florida gonna continue to keep the majority? Because we do good things for all of you that are not just the hot button issues that we care about, but the, but the day to day issues that impact your daily lives. And he's absolutely correct. We're gonna get that message across. Everybody here talks about the environment and that we want to make sure there's enough clean water for us to drink and, enough, and, and that we don't have green algae and the like. We've put in billions of dollars into the Lake Okeechobee uh, issue and Everglades restora restoration. We really do sp spend time, effort, energy, and money to make lives more comfortable for Floridians. But you don't read about that in the press because they don't like us. They only talk about things, that, and they misrepresent what we do anyway. But I want you to know that our number one priority is what means, what makes your life better. And that is why we're gonna keep our supermajority because we're not into free stuff. We're not into opening uh, borders. We're into making sure that you have a great, opportunity to live your life in the greatest state in the country. Yes. Can I add one more, Madam President? Sure. As I sit here right now with my concealed carry, legally, I also want to give a big round of applause. I think Florida just joined, I think we're the 26th state to have a constitutional carry. You guys promised that. You delivered it. Florida is truly becoming the state that everybody wants to move to because it's safe. We're getting healthier. We're getting, we're, we're protecting our environment. And I love what you said earlier about the housing. Collier County just passed some legislation that they're gonna make sure we have housing, not just affordable housing, but housing that can be lived in and afforded by the important key essential people, our first responders, our wounded veterans, those kind of people here, and I love and kind of throw my chest out high when I know that you all are delivered on your promises. When I grew up being told politicians don't, you sat on that stage 10 months ago and everything you said, and I kept notes, you guys checked those boxes and got it done. So I say to you, Madam President, thank you. One last piece of, oh, this mic is so much stronger. One last piece of information, and then Scott will get into what the REC club should be doing moving forward. Uh, 
It's because of the state legislator. We, uh, Southwest Florida went through the storm of the century and Hurricane Ian. A story that doesn't get told a lot, and we've been telling it at previous shows. I know we did one on Fort Myers Beach, and a lot of people didn't know about it, is FEMA didn't pick up the entire tab. The federal government did not pick up the entire tab for the damages that Hurricane Ian did to Southwest Florida. So Collier County, Lee County, they were on the hook for a lot of money. And if they had to pick up that tab, taxes were going up. The state legislator picked up the entire bill because they're conservative. They work conservative fiscal policies, have a budget surplus, and they were able to afford that and take the tax burden off of you guys so you will not see the tax raises in Southwest Florida that you would expect from the storm of the century. You actually have, it's amazing, it really is, you have politicians in Florida that work for you. Back to you, Scott. What should the Republican clubs be focusing on so we don't see another devastating loss like we did in Jacksonville? Well, number one, we're gonna continue to register new Republican voters. We can't stop that mission-driven focus, but it means also having a diverse get out the vote Procedure and what I mean by that is in 2022. Do you guys realize what you guys did? You guys for the first time in history. This has never happened before you won early voting plus mail-in voting you guys outworked the Democrats and you won early voting in Jacksonville Duval in Clearwater Pinellas in Seminole County outside of Orlando you won in West Palm Beach and Miami-Dade counties. That's unheard of. And really, that's part of the reason why I'm advocating for early voting, is because when people saw, for example, in Broward County under Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, when they saw that you guys were winning early voting, I believe it actually inspired the low propensity Republican voters that maybe the weren't gonna vote, but when they saw that you were winning early voting, they want, yes, I'm gonna come out and vote, I'm gonna vote for D Governor DeSantis, and in part it was because of that that we won with more than 1.5 million more votes than Charlie Chris and the Democrats. And so let me expand upon that for a second, because I know that many of you, you may say to me, but Scott, we must do one day, one vote, one paper ballot. Let me hit you with some facts. In 2022, in Arizona, Maricopa County, 30% of machines had errors on election day. In Harris County, Texas, and Luzerne County, Pennsylvania, they ran out of paper ballots on election day. In Reno, Nevada, it snowed, and Adam Laxalt lost by 8,000 votes on election day. Basically, my message is to you, is the Democrats, they're gonna vote by mail, they're gonna vote early, they're gonna vote in person, they're gonna do legal ballot harvesting, and I believe firmly that if we as Republicans wait to vote on election day in November 2024, then you can already tell Joe Biden that he has won re-election. If we want to make sure that Republicans are gonna take back the White House, we must have a diverse procedure in getting everyone to lock in their votes either early, by mail, in person, or election day, but it has to be an all of the above approach to voting if we're gonna be victorious. Now, this message is really being heard loud and clear. Scott has been the biggest megaphone for this, that you now have both leading contenders Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis both committing to ballot harvesting where it's legal, what states it's legal, and getting out the vote in the early mailing ballot uh, voting initiatives because there's just no other way. Everyone, I, I hear it all the time. We gotta change the voter laws, we gotta change the voter laws. Okay, who has control of the federal government right now? The Democrats. So no laws are changing, maybe on the state level a little bit. So how do we beat them? exactly what Scott said. And then once you get control, then we can revisit some rules that might need some tinkering in some states. But remember that. Do not demonize early voting, mail-in ballot voting. We did it here in Florida, and we had the only red wave in the entire nation because we had a complete picture, and because who has the best Republican Party in the entire nation? 
objectively, the Florida Republican Party is the best. Okay. Scott. But, well, and I really, I, I want to shame us for a second because I think shame is important for growth. And what I mean by that is Nevada, Patrick, we lost by 8,000 that we could have defeated an incumbent Democratic senator. Can you give me the crowd, tell me what number of Nevada registered Republicans you believe stayed home on election day in 2022? Shout out a number. What'd you more. Say? more, 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 more. 150,000 Nevada Republicans stayed home on election day. We lost by 8,000. How shameful is that, that our people were so dejected or demoralized that they thought in their heads that they couldn't win when, if we had engaged in early voting and mail-in voting and ballot harvesting, which is legal in Nevada, we could today prevent Joe Biden and the Democrats from passing everything. And you know what, it gets worse, because when you guys think of blue states, you probably think of Oregon as one of those states, right? Christine Drazen was our Republican gubernatorial candidate and she lost her election in November 2022 by 66,000 votes. You, the crowd, you tell me how many registered Oregonian Republicans did not vote and stayed home on election day. Give me a number. Okay, listen, babe. When I'm telling you to give me a number, you start small. <laughs> and then you gradually increase. She's like, 200,000? No. <laughs> I'll just tell you. 126,000 Oregonian Republicans stayed home. And you know what's worse? It's worse because Oregon is a mail-in voter state only, meaning that our people didn't even fill out their gosh darn ballot and walk 10 feet to their mailbox. We could today have a Republican Oregonian governor had our people just actually voted. And I tell you this in part to shame us, but in part because I want you to realize the most important thing I'm gonna say is we have the votes. We just have to galvanize our people. And the last quote that I want you to remember, please. I live in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We have 45 days of early voting. It is asinine and foolish that I would allow the Democrats to vote for 45 days while I sit back on my hands and do nothing. Democrats vote for weeks. Republicans vote for 12 hours. Don't fall into that trap. Let's have an all of the above approach to voting and we are gonna win in a landslide in 2024. Can, can I ask a question? Hi, Pat Dearborn, first time caller. And I'm asking for a friend in the audience, and I mean this. Can you explain what ballot harvesting is and pretend I'm like a five-year-old? Okay, here's what Republicans think of when they think of ballot harvesting. I'm gonna describe it in a way that is very fun. You picture a person dressed in all black in the dead of night wearing five masks, five. They have a satchel. In the satchel is thousands of ballots that are pre-printed and ready to go. And like the Grinch, they tiptoe from drop box to drop box. Can you picture that perfectly? That is ballot harvesting, right? But ballot harvesting means different things. In Nevada, you can have ballot drop boxes at gun shops and gun shows. In Arizona, you can have somebody walk to a mailbox with you, and that is ballot chasing. In the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, you can do it for one disabled person per election per year. So ballot harvesting means different things. But let me explain why ballot harvesting is important and how the Democrats used it and then how Republicans used it. So, after 2016, when we won and we elected Donald J. Trump as the 45th president of the United States, hold for applause. The Democrats, they whined, they complained, they burned things down, but you know what they did? They changed the law 
and they allowed for it in California and Oregon, right? So what happened in 2018? The Democrats did ballot harvesting and they turned the once Republican stronghold of Orange County, every single congressional seat went from red to blue. But never forget, they didn't cheat, guys. They did it lawfully. They did it legally. Now, Republicans, we finally got smart and we started ballot harvesting, which means knocking on a low propensity door saying, Patrick, I know that you maybe you think that your vote doesn't count, but how about this? You fill out your ballot and I will personally take it from you and I will turn it in for you and I'm gonna make sure that your vote counts. We're gonna do that for the low propensities. We did that going into 2020 and get this, we flipped two of those Orange County seats from blue to red, electing Young Kim, electing Michelle Steele. Now here's the fun part, 2022, after the census, we were freaking out because everybody's leaving California, they're leaving Illinois, they're leaving New York, and so they're losing congressional seats, right? Now California was losing a congressional seat and we were going, oh my gosh, we're gonna lose a seat in the house. Now, despite us supposing to lose a seat, we re-elected Young Kim and Michelle Steele in 2022, and we elected Duarte, we elected Valadeo, we picked up a seat in the California House because we engaged in mail-in voting and early voting and ballot harvesting, and if it weren't for Florida picking up four seats, if it weren't for New York, if it weren't for California, we wouldn't have the narrow representation and the majority that we have in the House of Representatives if it weren't for an all of the above approach to voting. I'm gonna ask you a doomsday question and then we'll do final words to make it nice and positive. Scott, what are the potential repercussions should Joe Biden have a second term? Or even worse, Gavin Newsom. Slimy, greasy Gavin Newsom. I, I just threw up in my mouth. Give me a second. <laughs> I know, I know. But you know what? Shaming works, so does fear. What could happen if Joe Biden gets another turn? Well, let me say it this way. We have millions of illegal immigrants who are pouring into our country. We have 300 Americans that are dying daily from fentanyl poisoning. We're on the verge of nuclear war with Russia. Our country is bankrupt and we're the personal piggy bank for the rest of the world while our roads, while our education system is crumbling here in our country. If we are unable to win this election in 2024, I don't see us coming back. And more importantly, if you are uninspired to take action to make sure that we're gonna have a positive spirit and awakening in our country, if you don't find that within your soul right now, I don't know what is gonna wake people up. I don't know how bad it has to get for people to understand how worse it could get. And so really, what I have to say, taking away from anything that we're talking about today, is please don't let this be that you go home and you say, wow, I heard from the Senate president, I'm glad that we're good here in Florida, and I'm glad that I heard from Patrick and, and Brandon Leslie and that I saw Scott Pressler's hair, but <laughs> no, really, I want you guys to do something. I want you to fight like you love our country and you love freedom more than anything. And I want you to really understand what's at stake because we're in, you can't go to Hungary, you can't go to Poland, you can't go to Australia, you can't go to the United Kingdom, you can't go to Canada. There is nowhere else to run. We either fight for freedom and we succeed here or we lose globally. I'm just going to make it a little bit worse. There's one thing that I can add on to how horrible it would be if Joe Biden wins. So right now we have a 6-3 Supreme Court control, conservative to liberal justices. And really, the Supreme Court is the only reason 
we still have a nation at this moment. They have been making some major rulings lately. We won't get into that, but there's been a lot of wins. If Joe Biden wins another four years, that means we have another five and a half years of Joe Biden control. Right now, today, Supreme Court Justice Thomas uh, uh, is 75 years old. And Alito, it's very young. Well, you're, you're 49, so you can't stop. <laughs> but seriously, Thomas is 75 and Alito is 73. I'm not, I'm praying, knocking on wood, they got another five years in them. But do they retire? Does something happen? I don't know. You, you don't know. That's playing, you know, that's getting to the edge there. So imagine Joe Biden gets to pick the next two Supreme Court justices in replacement of our two most conservative and what the kids say based Supreme Court justices that we have. Just food for thought. All right, with that, Pat, make it positive. Final thoughts, you go first. Wow. So I, I walked in these doors in a pretty good mood. I wore my friend Tim Jurech's t-shirt, saw a lot of friends here tonight. Scott Pressler and Brendan Leslie have kind of got me bummed out. No, listen, look, there, there are a lot of you like me some nights. We watch the news. We read on our phones. We do whatever we do. Maybe pop in a Netflix show. The Bear is very good, by the way. I recommend The Bear on Hulu. And then we go to bed and we toss and turn at night because we're stressed out because Joe Biden is literally the worst president in history. And when I have those sleepless nights, it's not for me. I've had a great life. John Mayo's had a great life. He's 92 years old and still the chairman of the CCREC. But John and I talk all the time. You know why John fights? John fights for his grandkids. My wife and I fight for my 10-year-old, 11-year-old Amelia's 11, hun, and my grandson Luca is, is 9, 8, and they've been on the show before back at the table. And I fight for them, and I fight for my son who's 20 years old at Florida State. He loves Tallahassee. And I see in my son, I see in his friends, the next wave of Scott Presslers, the next wave of Brendan Leslie's. And it gives me hope. But... The dark cloud, the dark ooze that will succumb this country to in 2024 if we don't win. My last comment is you inspire people because the passion you have, and I'm going to throw out some other names here, conservative ant, gays against groomers. The passion he has, he was on our show, and there's a whole bunch of parents in the audience. And conservative ants like, if I'm fighting this hard, and I'm a gay conservative Republican, why are you not fighting that hard? Why, are, why am I not as passionate as Scott Pressler is? Why don't I know all those little things? Why don't I know what the heck ballot harvesting is? What can I do to get involved? And if you want to get involved and not just post a funny meme on social media that has Joe Biden with a white bag with Hunter Biden in the White House, because I'll, I'll be honest with you, that's the distraction. I talk to Larry all the time in Byron. They are trying to pull the wools over our eyes from weather balloons to UFOs to aliens to cocaine in the White House. And all those things are kooky. Meanwhile, we are deeping further and further in debt. We're going down a dark hole, and we're becoming a godless country. And if we don't change this in 2024. So my plea to all of you and to myself is I need to inspire myself and others to be a light in a dark world, and to actually do something. And if you want to know what you can do when it comes to affecting the next local elections here and getting your feet warmed up, and then in 2024, I see a Victoria. There are a lot of doers in this room, Diane, Yvette, all you all. See Scott Pressler after this meeting. See one of these people after the meeting and go, what can I do to actually get involved and put your money and your behind behind this movement so we can save our country. Madam Queen, President. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I want to say I'm really proud to hear from a young man like Scott. Um, there's a lot of hope for our party when you have young people that are that passionate, knowledgeable, and caring. And I, and I commend him for his work. You know, uh, for me, you know, I'm on the downside. I'm 70 years old. I've got one more year as president, two more years in the Senate. I'm going to continue to do the things that I think are important for my community. 
I'm going to continue to run Senate campaigns to keep our supermajority. We're going to, Florida is going to continue to become redder and redder. I'm just really proud that there's a lot of people here that can take on the mantle that those of us who are aging out uh, will be leaving behind. And I just want to thank Scott so much for, for being here and for being so inspirational. Well, I do support a Biden John Fetterman ticket. If he wants to choose him as the VP, I fully endorse and support that. Number two, you know, uh, after President Brandon was elected, you know, our gas prices got really high and they're still up there. And so we started doing some gas station voter registration. I was thinking the other day, why don't we start doing some Sound of Freedom movie theater voter <laughs> registration? Set up a table on public sidewalk outside of your local movie theater. Do it during the busiest show times of Sound of Freedom. People, when they see that we have the opportunity to stop sex trafficking here in the country, they're gonna be fired up, they're gonna be impassioned, they're gonna wanna do something. Help guide them by registering them to vote and have them join their local county party. And third, the most important thing that I wanna say is to not only all of you who are listening, but to everybody that's watching at home, if you wanna make sure that we have momentum going into next year, there, the Virginia State Legislature has every seat is opening up this November. And let me tell you, if we give Governor Glenn Youngkin a House of Delegates and we pick up two seats in the State Senate, he will be able to govern conservatively and Virginia will be in play and on the table next year in 2024. So you at home, Donate to Emily Brewer for State Senate. Donate to Siobhan Dunavit for State Senate. Donate to Juan Pablo Segura for State Senate. You donate to those people. We win those State Senate seats. Virginia will be in play. And the Democrats are going to have a very difficult time winning the presidency without those electoral votes in Virginia. Thank you for the opportunity for having me, Brendan. I couldn't be more proud to be surrounded by you and the Senate president and maybe Patrick, maybe. But no, thank you guys for having me tonight. I don't have any final words, but I do have a request from the audience, especially the ones over here. If you wouldn't mind joining us in the middle, I want to take a picture. We never take a group picture with the audience. So anyone that doesn't mind, come here in the middle for a second. Zach, can you come up here? I want to take a picture with everyone because we're going to keep spreading this show. Let's all crowd in here. And then I'll, when I say lose your mind, everyone cheer. It's going to be a cooler picture. You guys will look like you like me. It's okay if you don't like me. We're just doing it for the show, to promote the show. It's a fun time. Zach, come up here and take the picture from this angle. I need a picture with all of you. I need a new profile picture on Twitter. Everyone keeps making fun of my receding hairline and the trolls. It's, I don't like it. I, I need one with a hat on so they can't see that I'm, I'm a man and going bald. Scott, you want to come join in the back there? You're like eight feet tall, so you got go to you gotta go down there. You want to go down there? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to count down. I'm going to tell you guys to just cheers, whatever you want to do. Say Brendan's balding. Just lose your mind. Make it look like we're a happy family. You know, it's Christmas time. We're taking Christmas picture. All right, Zach, what, let me know when you have the best angle. We're framing this up. We're framing this up. We're framing this up. Framing this up. How's it looking, Zach? It's looking good. All right, guys, on the count of three, everyone just lose their mind. Act like you like me, okay? One, two, three. Do we need more? One more. Get more excited. Ready? On the count of three. Hands up. Everything. Like you love America. Like Scott has the best hair in America. One, two, three. Good? All right. That was my final words. Thank you, everyone, for coming out to the pa uh, wow, Patriot Talk Show, Florida's Voice Unfiltered, rebranded. 
We are going to be back, uh, and our next show will probably be in September. Location TBD. It's either here or the Alamo. I'll let you know. We have the raffle. If you haven't entered the raffle for the three free month uh, memberships uh, to shoot at the Alamo, put it in now. We'll do that drawing in a couple minutes. And buy all my t-shirts. They're $5 off. Really cheap. Support American businesses. Thank you. I want to get rid of them. God bless everyone. We'll see you soon.